Hi, George here with JustOneDram.com for uh, another Not So Whiskey Wednesday. Today I'm going to be talking about unaged spirits. For example, the unaged spirits I'll be talking about are vodka, gin, rum, and unaged corn whiskey or moonshine. And just start talking about each one. We'll start with we'll start with the rum. Rum it can or rum can go either way with aging or being unaged, but white rum is generally unaged. I actually have a bottle, speaking of aged rum, any gold rum should technically be an aged product. Of course there can be caramel coloring used to give that color, but generally speaking it's been aged. I have a bottle of Bacardi 8 year just out of reach that I originally wanted to just pull into the video for a second, but a little too far away, so you can have everything from an unaged, compl a completely unaged rum to something getting up there in age that takes on some interesting whiskey characteristics, in a sense. But I digress. Back to back to white rum, and we'll stick there for now. Now, white rum isn't necessarily always unaged because I have a bottle of Cruzen aged white rum here. So not ne all white spirits are not necessarily unaged. Another example of that, real quick tangent, not rum, but Blanco tequila. Not a big tequila drinker, but I do like this brand quite a bit, El Ultimo Agave. But regardless, Blanco tequila is not necessarily unaged. Blanco tequila can be aged up to four months before it's considered a reposado. So just because it's a white tequila does not mean it's unaged. However, Blanco tequila can be completely unaged. Back to the rum at hand. This bottle right here is Leblanc Cachaça. It's a rum from Brazil. The key difference between Cachaça and your conventional molasses based rum is that it's distilled directly from just sugar cane, not the molasses byproduct. Really cool stuff though. I feel like pouring just a tiny little bit real quick to just give you some examples of the flavors and such in Cachaça. Because why not? Cachaça is very light fruity, very floral. It kind of makes me think of a middle ground between something like a tequila and a, or your conventional rum, but it definitely favors that, that rum sweetness. Shots is a perfect summer drink. It's lighter than your conventional rum but can be used for all the same purposes. Really great stuff. Now let's move on to... We'll go with vodka. Got a few bottles here, all made from different things as examples. Got here we've got Russian Standard, a very good Russian vodka. Contrary to popular belief, vodka is not a majority made from potato. It is, well, there are potato vodkas, there are wheat vodkas, corn vodkas. I even have this Hawaiian rum, which is a sugarcane based vodka. And it's really excellent stuff. I don't know that it's even possible to get outside of Hawaii itself. So, I'm going pretty slow with this bottle. So, I'm not sure when I'll be back there again. But back to the Russian standard, it is made from winter wheat. It's a very nice bottle of vodka. As mentioned, the Hawaiian vodka is made from the sugar cane. And then an example of another wheat vodka would be Black Button Distilling's Soft White Wheat Vodka. And the thing with vodka is, uh, when vodka is distilled, it must come off the still at at least 190 proof. That really strips a lot of all, all the flavors out of the alcohol, the distillate. Whereas a whiskey, even a moonshine or something aged like this Old Weller Antique, 
comes off the still at under 140 proof. The vodka comes off much higher, goes generally through many more plates. I believe the average or the minimum number of plates needed in a column for vodka is to be commercially viable is 12 plates, so it's distilled technically at least 12 times. Yes, you'll hear companies saying that their vodka is twice distilled, three times distilled, four times distilled. It's a little bit of smoke blowing, very loose marketing strategy there. Each plate is technically one distillation, so it's not really... It, it's kind of a meaningless marketing term. I digress. So vodka being distilled such a high proof loses a lot of its flavor, is very neutral. It can be used for all sorts of stuff. Martinis, goes good in tonic. Goes well, vodka being so neutral can go with just about anything. Alright, let's talk a little about gin now. Yeah, I've got a couple examples here. One being the old standby as you can tell by the size of the bottle. A majority of my collection of bottles would, it sticks around the 750 milliliter to liter size. This is the 1.75 because quite frankly I do drink a lot of gin and it's more cost effective this way. Brokers is an awesome London dry gin, London based brand. Also got Black Buttons Citrus Forward Gin. Another great bottle. The thing with gin, it's another, generally, you can't have aged gin, but generally, majority of the time actually, gin is an unaged spirit. Gin to be called gin is made with juniper, but gin is in many ways the first flavored vodka because the base for a batch of gin is in fact vodka, and then the vodka is steeped with the juniper, the coriander, all the different herbs and spices, and you get the notes you get in the gin. And honestly, I do feel like a gin and tonic, so I will be having a gin and tonic using the Black Button Citrus Forward Gin. Citrus Forward Gin is very interesting. It's different than a conventional gin because it uses a lot of orange, there are even hops. New York State grown hops. I don't remember the um, variety of hops used in it, so I won't even. I have an idea of what they were, but I don't want to be wrong. So I will not take a guess on that. And there it is. Just need a little tonic in there. I probably drink a little too much gin and tonic on a regular basis, but it's a fantastic drink for any time of the year. It's a great drink if you're a whiskey drinker and you need just something a little more refreshing, clear out your palate, clear out your, your nose, because drinking a lot of whiskey, especially when you go from bottle to bottle to bottle, trying different things all the time like I do, your palate gets a little worn out and sometimes you just don't want whiskey. As much as you love whiskey, you don't want any more because it's just beginning to all wear on you and muddle together and it's not quite as enjoyable. So gin and tonic is a great cocktail, or I'm sorry, long drink to clear you right up. It's nice, refreshing, both enjoyable in the winter as it is now or in the summer. Again, the, the gin, it does come off of still as vodka at over 190 proof. This is really nice. Black Button Gin makes a very good gin and tonic. It's got a lot of it's got some cinnamon notes that are interesting in a very very good way. I'm really I'm really enjoying it. 
All right, now on to what's becoming more and more popular in recent years, Moonshine. I don't have too many unaged whiskeys in my collection because, as you may have realized in my other videos and posts on the blog, that I'm primarily a scotch drinker, and I don't generally drink things under 12 years. Some of my favorites are 15, 18 year bottles. So it's the complete, an unaged whiskey is a complete and total unbelievably opposite side of the spectrum for me. So it takes a little getting used to and warming up for me with these, but I'm slowly, slowly expanding my palate. The term moonshine is an unregulated term in the beverage world. It doesn't carry a specific definition as something like whiskey or vodka, rum, they all have specific legal definitions of what they are, but moonshine is just, as I said, unregulated. The word moonshine comes from back in the times of prohibition here in America when obviously alcohol was illegal, production of alcohol was illegal except for certain distilleries who were allowed to remain operational for medicinal purposes. Yes, you could in fact get a prescription from your doctor for alcohol. One such distillery that remained operational was Buffalo Trace, which I actually do have a bottle of their moonshine, or as they call it, White Dog, which is another name for unaged whiskey. They got to stay open through prohibition for, again, medicinal purposes. And But regardless, the term moonshine came from that time because backwoods distillers, bootleggers, the the, tech, the law dodging uh, rebels making whiskey out there would do so out in the woods at night as to make it harder to be found and they did it by the light of the moon so instead of being out there in the sunshine they are out in the moonshine and the name carried over to the spirit the three bottles of unaged whiskey that I have in my collection Probably the smallest portion of my collection is unaged whiskey. I have Georgia Moon, which is packaged quite nicely in this mason jar. I have Buffalo Trace White Dog Mash Number no. 1, which is has a very tight cork on it. Really quite nice. It's very very corn heavy. It has rye and barley in there as well. Then I, of course, have the Black Button Unaged Corn Whiskey or Moonshine. The thing with moon or Unaged Whiskey or Moonshine is it does go through the still as though it is a whiskey. The exact same process of making a whiskey to be aged, like this, comes off the still at under 140 proof. It retains a lot of the flavor but being unaged it goes direct to the bottle and you do miss out on quite a few of the characteristics you pick up from the oak aging of spirits you won't have as much vanilla caramel you won't have as much you won't well, you'll have little to no vanilla caramel no toasted notes it will it can generally be a little rougher around the edges because of the lack of uh, being settled in the barrel, the barrel pulling things out, fusing its flavors with it. It won't be quite as, generally won't be quite as smooth, but there are some very serious exceptions to that rule. Don't assume that a whiskey, an unaged whiskey is going to be sharp just because it's been unaged, because the quality of the spirit can vary greatly, and not every uh, spirit will be, unaged spirit will be so sharp. It's gonna pour a little moonshine. This is the black button moonshine.
a lot of companies will bottle their moonshine at a higher proof. We'll take a look at the proofs of these real quick. Uh, the Georgia Moon is only 80 proof. And that's leaking. It is only 80 proof, so it, is, it has been proofed down quite a bit. Buffalo Trace is sitting at 125 proof, so that's pretty hot. And the black button is 100 proof. So with more proof does sometimes come with a little more flavor, but it can be a bit sharp. Some of the in corn, unaged corn whiskey, a lot of the notes you'll get a lot of corn sweetness. It's a bit soft, even a little hint of floralness. On the palate, very heavy on the corn sweetness. Very warming and round. And it's for a whiskey drinker who likes generally much higher in age things, it's a very different experience, but an experience I definitely recommend having because there are all these different spirits out there, and it's a little snobbish to say that. You won't drink a type of spirit because it's so different, like say, to have a, an opposition to something unaged like a moonshine because of connotation of the name moonshine. It's a little snobbish. It's about as silly as being a scotch drinker who will only drink single malts or only drink blended scotch and hate the other for no reason other than the fact that they chose this type and style and no other way is the right way. It's a very stupid way of looking at things when there's such a fine array of spirits out there that it's good to appreciate all of them. They're all their own art form that's tucked away in there between chemistry and culinary. It's really cool. Hope you enjoyed the video today. I know I kinda got a little rambly there but can't help it. <laughs> For you whiskey drinkers out there, there are a lot of these unaged spirits out there that can have so many great uses, very palatable. Be open to them, give them a try, and like I said, gin and tonic is probably my favorite long drink because it just it's so refreshing, it cleanses you of all the buildup in your palate from all the whiskey you drink, and if you're a whiskey maker, and you primarily only make whiskey, you do get a little tired of drinking the things you make, even if it's someone else's brand because you're around it all day, you smell it all day, it gets in your sinuses, in your in your mouth. And if you want to have a nice drink, gin and tonic is absolutely the way to go. Very cleansing, refreshing. I may have said that probably five times this video, but I'm a firm believer in a good long drink. Regardless, I'll try and wrap up this video because it's been going on a little too long, I admit. I'm, I apologize. So if you like the video, make sure to check out JustOneDram.com. Subscribe, like the video, leave comments on what you thought of everything I talked about, anything you'd like to see in the future, Facebook, Twitter, social media nonsense. Well, happy Not-So-Whiskey Wednesday. Cheers.